All right, it is a Friday, which means it's time for our weekly feature, Tech Base. And tonight we're looking at the futuristic dream of many aspiring extraterrestrials. So that is the dream of flying to Mars, living on Mars. And in specific, one South African dreamer, the head of innovation at SAP Africa, and theoretical physicist, Dr. Adriana Marais. She is currently one of the 100 Mars One Project astronaut candidates in the running to move to the red planet in the next decade. Dr. Murray joins us from our studios in Parliament. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, Adriana, I'm sure you've been asked this a million times. Why would you give up life on this planet? You have a successful one. You have a lot going for you. Why do you want to go to Mars? Hi, Francis. Such a pleasure to be here still on Earth and chatting to you this evening. Uh, there are so many reasons. I mean, if I have one word, it would be curiosity. But uh, if I had a sentence, maybe I would say that achieving the seemingly impossible, which is really what it, what it appears to be from our perspective now as humans, could it be possible to establish a community on another planet? I believe it is possible, and I hope that the inspiration of seeing this seemingly impossible adventure being achieved will inspire generations of humans for decades to come to using science and technology to achieve goals that we may never have thought possible. Is this not theoretical? Uh, do you hold it lightly or, or do you really think this could actually happen in your actual lifetime? Yeah, for sure. So uh, the U.S. announced plans to go to the moon in the early 60s, and that seemed even more a far-fetched goal at the time with the uh, computing and engineering capabilities uh, far from what we have today, nearly 50 years later from the first moon landing. So next year we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the 1969 first Apollo landing on the moon. And the question is, will the surviving Apollo astronauts live to see the day when we either return to the moon or or, or get ourselves to Mars. I believe that we need to believe in our dreams to make them come true. Technologically, it is possible to get humans to Mars. And uh, watch the space. Uh, if you don't believe me, I, I am putting all of my efforts and power behind being one of the humans or at least inspiring the next generation of explorers to do what humans have always done, really, which is to, to dream, to imagine, to explore, and to achieve goals that others may never have thought possible, which in turn go on to inspire others. Well, well explain how it works. So you're the, with the 100 Mars One project. Uh, do, do, you, do you interact with the other 99, for example, ever? Yes, so actually just this week, SAP TV has been here in Cape Town, and we have Mikolai Zielinski, another member of the Mars 100, who's also an SAP employee in town. We have been uh, climbing in caves, we've been snorkeling and having a wonderful time uh, documenting some of our thoughts around getting ourselves uh, to Mars in the coming decade. It, this also gives you a chance to talk about the things that interest you. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I don't really know what a theoretical physicist is. And, and tell us um, ab about your interests and, and your research in quantum biology. Yes, yeah, so I think one of the most fascinating discoveries that I believe we are in line to make by getting crews to Mars to investigate would be to discover evidence of life there. So we know that Mars once had oceans around two to three billion years ago. We see pebbles and canyons and other geological features that indicate Mars had large bodies of water. Uh, from an Earth perspective, we know that large bodies of water mostly host life, and we are really excited to potentially discover either fossils or perhaps living systems themselves still surviving in some niche environments somewhere on the surface of Mars. But uh, from another perspective, um, looking at resource management, I think, is one of the huge crises and opportunities of our time. The inequality that we see around us globally uh, can really be solved to a great degree, I believe, through education and through resource management. So as director for the Foundation for Space Development, uh, based here in Cape Town, we are really excited about inspiring youth throughout Africa to get excited about science, technology, engineering, and maths through space, which uh, is always a draw card for young and old in terms of getting the imagination going. And we hope to send Africa's first mission to the moon 
in the coming decade uh, and documenting this all the way along uh, throughout classrooms and universities throughout the continent. Um, we believe that, you know, with space, space is an excellent way to inspire people to get excited about the capabilities of science and technology. So from perhaps discovering evidence of life on Mars to getting Africa technologically and from a scientific perspective playing a role in space exploration, um, as well as looking at, as I've said, resource management. So technologies that we'll use on Mars, like precision farming, growing plants in indoor environments, um, sort of solar-powered desalination, technologies that we need to manage our water supplies better on Earth. These are all fundamental uh, directions that we should be thinking on here on Earth, and that uh, doing the challenging um, engineering feats in space will really inspire the kind of technologies that can uh, create a brighter future, whatever planet we're on. So, so a lot of exciting opportunities. I'm sure you've thought about this. You are a settler. You land on Mars. Explain what you think it'll be like in the beginning for, for the humans there. So difficult, of course, and when we look through history, all of us have examples of people in our families, whether it was our parents or many generations back, of people who've left everything they have and for whatever reason moved to a brand new place of which historically they had very little knowledge. So, I mean, humans emerged in central eastern Africa, according to um, the, the scientific record. And this means that we've covered the globe, whether it's been on foot, by kayak, by ship, by train, by aeroplane, and now we have the opportunity to explore by rocket. So we'll do what pioneers have always done, which is uh, live a difficult life initially as we establish the kind of infrastructure that we would need to call our lives comfortable. We'll be subsistence farmers, bringing seeds with us from Earth in order to grow the food that we'll need to sustain ourselves there. On top of that, we'll bring uh, you know, sophisticated equipment to extract water from the sand, to extract oxygen from that water to breathe. Uh, and on top of that, we will need to form a happy community somehow. So we will be looking at how well teams work together on top of technical capabilities. We will need people who are funny, people who are kind, the people who are empathetic, people who work well in a team to really achieve this goal. And you've spoken about the possibility of life, um, but at best, are we talking about sort of a one-cell little amoeba, or, or do you think there's, there, there could be something more? So we've been observing Mars since the 1970s, which was the, uh, on the surface of Mars, which was when the Viking missions from NASA landed on the surface and have been looking around. Of course, we've been observing the surface of Mars for hundreds of, hundreds of years with telescopes. So we've not yet found any evidence of any large things moving around on the surface. We see dust storms, but other than that, it looks a pretty desolate place. So excitingly, next Monday, uh, night, I think it is for us in South Africa. The NASA InSight mission will land on Mars, and this mission will dig to around five meters, which is deeper than we've ever looked below the surface of Mars. And we don't know what the InSight mission will find in the particular location where it is landing, but certainly below the surface, there may be pockets of environmental conditions that may be able to support some kind of microbial life, or you can let your imagination run wild at this point. I've, I've had drawing competitions with kids that I give talks to, to to ask them what kind of things we may find down there, because really it's anybody's guess what kind of life might exist in other environments besides our own. Uh, but uh, the radiation on the surface is extremely harsh, so underground is really an exciting part of the exploration of Mars, and that actually begins on Monday, so I encourage all the viewers to tune in to NASA live stream to see whether that mission lands successfully 200 million kilometers from Earth on Monday night next week on the surface of Mars. All right, thank you. This has been so fascinating. Thank you very much, theoretical physicist and aspiring Mars habitant, uh, Dr. Adriana Maria, and we will indeed follow that trip to Mars if it ever does happen.